Hey guys, it's your guy in the chair here, and look, 2023 is on its way, and the year of movies is upon us, man. 2023 is going to have hit after hit after hit after banger after banger after banger. I'm telling you, man, 2023 is going to be crazy when it comes to movies. You guys are going to want to be there to see it all happen. I hope so. I'm definitely going to be there to see it all happen, but look, I got to let you guys know what my most anticipated movies of 2023 are. Now, I didn't necessarily put together like a, num a numerical list or anything like that, like ranking my top 10 or things like that. I am going to go based off a scale out of 10. Now, I will be exceeding this scale. It's going to be pretty weird here. So essentially, I'm going to be ranking my excitement for these movies out of 10. Some of these movies may exceed that number. It can, the highest it could possibly go is 15. But I'm doing that to be kind of extra and just let you know how much I actually am excited for those films. The lowest I could possibly go on this list is probably like a 6 out of 10 because while my excitement isn't all there for some of these movies. I am still looking forward to these movies being released and seeing if it can exceed my expectations or possibly go lower. But like I said, I'm gonna, so I'm going to keep that scale out of 10 and I'm just going to start naming off some movies, man. And I'll let you guys know when I get to the end, but please stick with me throughout this because I want you guys to be able to experience these movies next year, man. It's going to be absolutely insane. So let's get this list kicked off. All right, so the first movie on this list is probably one that I would say is my most anticipated movie of 2023. And if you've seen the first one of the first movie, it's probably yours too, guys. I'm talking about Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. My excitement for this film is a 15 out of 10. Like I am ecstatic for this movie. Like I said, if you've seen the first one, this is probably your most anticipated movie as well. No movie has grabbed me like by my shoulders and completely just shook me to my core as a Spider-Man fan other than Spider-Man 2 but it's but in, in like in but into the Spider-Verse shook me to my absolute core this was a movie that I saw at least four times in the theater twice in a single day like in the span of like at like two hours i literally took my brother to go see this movie and then my friend texted me after i took my brother home talking about some yeah we're gonna go see it do you want to come Hell yeah, I want to go see this movie. I literally saw it twice in the same day. Like, I love Into the Spider-Verse so much. And this movie gives me all the nostalgic feels of that original movie. This trailer gives you all the emotional... Um, the, the emotional just, you know, weight that you feel from the first film the, as far as like Miles' family and things like that. And the Spider-Man that you are going to see in this movie. We get Oscar Isaac as Spider-Man 2099, Issa Rae as Spider-Woman. We get Daniel Kaluuya as Spider-Punk. Dude, we even get to see the PlayStation 1 Spider-Man like chase Miles Morales down. Like, come on, bro. That's amazing. That is so cool. Like, this if you're a Spider-Man fan, if you're a fan of the Marvel... If you're a Spider-Man fan... You need to be front and center in this movie because this is going to be one of the biggest extravaganzas of 2023. I mean, this thing is going to go absolutely ballistic. I cannot wait for this movie to be re to be released. I, I'm so I was so upset that it got pushed back, but like I, I'm okay. If that's just gonna make the movie a lot better, please take your time. Take your time. Don't push it back anymore though. But take your time and just let this thing come out in June. I believe it comes out. Yeah, June. I can't wait. June can't come here fast enough, guys. Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse kicks off my list. All right, so the next movie we have on this list is Oppenheimer. Look, my excitement for this movie is a 9 out of 10, and I know one of my friends will probably be very heartbroken about that, but Oppenheimer I'm very excited about. One, because it's directed by Chris Nolan. Who's not excited for a Christopher Nolan film? And two, Killian Mur uh, I'm hoping I'm saying his name right. Killian Murphy, the guy who play who's in Peaky Blinders, and he's also in other Nolan films as well, but the, the guy who plays Thomas Shelby, Shelby in Peaky Blinders. I recently started that. I'm on season four now. Let me explain something to you. If you have not seen Peaky Blinders, please go watch that show because that thing is fucking incredible. That is such a great show. Peaky Blinders is absolutely amazing. That's honestly just built my anticipation and my excitement for Oppenheimer because I'm realizing how how raw and how incredible of a talent that Killian Murphy is, man. This dude is a really talented actor. I really enjoy watching him perform on screen. And he's playing the man who moved the earth, man. He's playing Oppenheimer, the guy who made the atomic bomb. And I really can't wait to see this film. This movie has a star-studded cast. We got Emily Blunt, Robert Downey Jr., Josh Peck, Jack Quaid. Who else is in this movie? We got Florence Pugh, Matt Damon. I mean, dude. We have a lot of, I, I think I said Rami Malek's name. If not, Rami Malek. It's just a talented cast. It's a movie directed by Christopher Nolan. Look, I got to give Chris, Christopher Nolan credit because 
he really be having me watch a lot of movies that I have no interest in if it was directed by anything anybody else. Like I'm not really like Dunkirk. Probably not seeing a movie about about you know Dunkirk unless it was directed by Chris Nolan, which it was. Um, Oppenheimer probably like not seeing a movie about the atomic bomb be made unless it's made by Christopher Nolan because who else can bring anything like that to life? It has to be Chris Nolan. So Chris Nolan is the reason I'm so excited for this movie. Killian Murphy is as well, and so is this star-studded cast. Oppenheimer is the second movie on this list. All right, so my next movie on this list is a movie that you know, whenever I watch this trailer, I always tear up. It, it really gets me really emotional because I'm just afraid that whatever happened in the, whatever happens in this film is going to tear my heart to shreds and I don't, don't think I'm ready for whatever's about to occur. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm talking about The Guardians of the Galaxy 3. My excitement for this movie, I'd say, is a 12 out of 10. I am so excited to see what happens in this film, but like I said, I get so emotional thinking about what characters could possibly die. I'm not going to get into big theories about who I personally think is going to die. <coughs> Drax. But, um, <laughs> look, this movie is something that I have been looking forward to for a very long time. And, look, James Gunn is, I think this is his officially his last movie in Marvel until he ste while he steps on to, you know, directing DC movies and becoming the, the head of DC, things like that. This is going to be James Gunn's farewell letter, not only to Marvel fans, but to the Guardians as well. And I think he's going to send them off in a, one of the most heartfelt ways. I'm just not ready for it because that holiday special, which was really good, by the way, his holiday special really alluded to the fact that this is going to be a very heartfelt movie it's gonna have a lot of emotion be very family based and i've grown very close to the guardians man he's made them characters that we have loved so dearly to our hearts and i'm just not ready for whatever happens in this film honestly rocket might die too but i'm hoping not man i really don't god Whatever's going to happen in this movie is going to break my heart, but I know it's going to be awesome. I know James Gunn is going to put his all into it, and he's going to be sending us off with a bang, man. I think he's going to be sending the Guardians off with a bang. Honestly, I'm, I've, I have huge hopes for Phase 5 in general. I hope that fit... I hope that Phase 5 really kicks Marvel into a whole new gear and brings us back to, like, Phase 2, Phase 3 type... Um type you know movements because phase four was one of the most convoluted controversial phases we've had in marvel ever like a lot of people are up and down if you were to ask like 10 people like randomly to rank their phase four projects you would get completely different lists from probably all 10 of them and they'd probably be arguing their asses off because one of them likes she hulk a lot more than everybody else but I mean, well, I'd probably be the She-Hulk advocate, but no, James James Gunn is going to absolutely blow us away with whatever happens in this film. I can't wait for it. Guardians of the Galaxy 3 is also on my list. Now, I can't mention Phase 5 of Marvel without mentioning the movie that's supposed to kick it off and I, what I am hoping is the most explosive way a phase has ever been kicked off in Marvel history. I'm talking about Ant-Man and the Wasp. Quantum Mania, man. We are introducing Kang the Conqueror. Jonathan Majors is finally making his debut into the MCU as far as the big screen goes because he already made it in the television series uh, being in Loki and things like that. But look, first of all, the trailer for this movie is absolutely amazing. The rendition of Yellow Big Road by Elton John literally gets me every time. It's got me in my... Like, I have to literally contain myself from screaming, Me, I'm the Yellow Brick Road! Ah! I literally have to contain myself in my seat from just beltering that out loud in the theater and having people look at me like, what is wrong with him? But I'd be sitting there going crazy. The vibes of this movie is so trippy. I just know we're going to be going into places we never expected as far as the quantum realm goes. I'm very excited for where this movie takes us. Oh, and also, I mean, come on, guys, that line. So what will it be? Ant-Man. Like, whoo! Jonathan Majors, boy, he coming to have a really big year this year, man. I'm just, ah, I can't wait to see this guy on screen. I really... Oh, man, it's going to be a lot of... Phase 5 is going to be... We're going to be losing a lot of our deep, our beloved characters, man. Phase 5, I'm really hoping, brings Marvel back to its glory, glory because Kang has to be done correctly. We we Kang has to be the ultimate badass, and we're building onto Fantastic Four and bigger things. We're doing Secret Invasion. I need Phase 5 to kick straight ass, and I think we get kicked... I think that the ass gets kicked off the right way with Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania. All right, so the next movie on my list, John Wick Chapter 4. I mean, do I really need to say more? My excitement for this movie is a 14 out of 10. If you've seen a John Wick movie, if you've seen the previous three, you already know 
what I'm what I'm talking about here, man. I mean, do we John Wick? We don't have to say much else. Like Keanu Reeves is back. John Wick is him. It, it's as simple as that. I'm gonna leave it at that. John Wick is coming back in March. Yeah, y'all, y'all already know what it is. I I don't even have to go any further than that. John Wick. All right, so my next movie on this list is Creed 3. Look, my excitement for this movie is an 8 out of 10 because, I mean, I can clearly see that we're getting into, you know, the basic Rocky story where it doesn't really need a big, you know, emotional story to really, you know, lean on. It just needs a story and an antagonist, and that antagonist just so happens to be John Major, so I'm completely sold on that. I'm also excited for the fact that this is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut, so I'm excited to see how this goes. Um, but like I said, I, I can see this that we're clearly getting to the into like the Rocky cliches where the story doesn't really need to hold much weight for this movie to be entertaining because we're just really here for the fight. I'm completely here to see John Majors and Michael B. Jordan square off. I think that's a very good fight that we're gonna see. I'm excited to see it happen. Eh, do I really have much else to say about this movie? Nah, it's Creed. Creed is amazing. Love Michael B. Jordan. Big fan of his. Really big. Really cannot wait to see the mark that Jonathan Majors leaves on all of us after this year. I think he's going to have a phenomenal year. And from here on out, he's probably going to be one of the biggest names in Hollywood. Dude is just making a name for himself and it's just only getting bigger. Jonathan Majors. Can't say enough about the guy. All right, so my next movie on this list is Scream 6. And I am at, I am at a 10 out of 10 for this movie. I'm very excited for this film because one, I love Scream. Scream is one of my favorite horror franchises of all time. Ghostface is one of the best. And honestly, this franchise just continues to prove after each installment how not only it can reinvent itself to stay fun and refreshing, how just it just stays to its core, man. This movie just, uh, well, this franchise itself just really stays to its roots and it doesn't, it, it doesn't do anything to like piss fans off. They know what the fans need from these movies and they give, they, they deliver every time. Honestly, the worst movie in this franchise is Scream 3 for me and honestly, Scream, yeah, well, Scream 3, it's not the best, but as far as Scream 1, 2, 4, and 5, amazing movies. Honestly, when I saw Scream 4, I felt like I was the only person who, like, really enjoyed that movie. Like, no, like, it, I enjoyed it. They We we enjoyed it so much, clearly, that they're bringing Hayden Panettiere's character back as Kirby. Can't wait to see her in this film. And honestly, I love how we're moving on to a, to a city setting and how this whole thing is being portrayed in New York. First of all, the teaser trailer is all I needed to see to make sure to make me feel like this movie is going to be absolutely insane. The the fact that this thing is in New York City and the the whole tagline saying no one this in New York City nobody can hear you scream. It's actually facts. It's one of the loudest cities ever. You're not really going to be he able to hear anything out there and I just love how this movie is really portraying to us that this is going to take a new twist. It's going to be a new game, new rules. Can't wait to see what Ghostface has in store for us next, man. I'm, I'm really excited. All right, so the next movie on this list I have is the Super Mario Brothers movie. I mean, do I really need to introduce this to anybody? I mean, I, I was going to say something like, if you ever played Nintendo as a kid, but everybody in any who's anybody knows who Mario is. Anybody who's anybody has played some sort of Mario game in their life. Like, everybody knows this movie's coming out, and I feel like this thing is going to smash box office records, like, insane insanely first of all the trailer is absolutely hilarious the penguins give my favorite line that i've seen in the trailer of 2022 that is only a taste of our fury do you yield that that's hilarious and then jack, jack black of course responds with no i don't and decides to just flame everything like because he's bowser look you got chris pratt pratt playing our favorite red plumber mario uh, Charlie Day's playing Luigi, Anya Taylor-Joy's playing Peach, Jack Black's playing Bowser, you got Keegan-Michael Key, such a star-studded cast, I think this movie's going to be absolutely amazing, it's made by Illumination, who makes all of them Despicable Me Minion movies, who have had very good success with that, and need I say more, it's the Super Mario Brothers movie, everybody's going to be there high out of their damn minds to enjoy whatever's going on in that, well, whatever's going on in that film, I know I'll be, so can't wait for it. Oh, hopefully the kids aren't high though. Yeah, I mean they might catch a secondary high if they're in my theater. I apologize for that in advance, <laughs> but uh, let's try to keep the kids off drugs. All right, so the next movie I have on this list is Mission Impossible: Dead Reckoning Part One. Let me explain something to you. If you have seen the Mission Impossible movies, and for this, this speaks for the entire franchise. If you've seen these movies, you understand that with each installment, except two, because one was good, two was okay, and then th from three on to six, or what do we, yeah, this is a six one, three, four, five, and six, 
These movies have done nothing but up the ante, gotten better in every single category. I mean, Mission Impossible continues to impress in every precedent of movie storytelling, cinema, just cinematic experiences. This movie, this franchise continues to improve upon all of that and so much more. First of all, I do have to give a shout out to Philip Seymour Hoffman, still being one of the best villains in the franchise, actually the best villain in the franchise in Mission Impossible 3. Absolute goosebumps every time I see that man. Uh, RIP to him as well. And first, second of all, Tom Cruise is 60 years old. Guys, this dude, the stunt that this dude tried to do, or now, well, he did it very successfully. The stunt that this man does in this film, they show a whole little preview for it before Avatar Way of the Water. You can probably find the clip on YouTube by now. Dude is ridiculous. I mean, the dedication that this man has to just doing death-defying stunts is ridiculous. And he just does it with such such a cool calmness about himself. Like, it's like he never gets phased by it. This dude is a real-life superhero at this point, And the Mission Impossible franchise is one that I have just, with each installment, my love for this franchise grows bigger and bigger. Like, I came out of Fallout ready to beat the shit out of any... <laughs> it literally ended the first person I saw. Luckily, I didn't do that. But, I mean, oh my god. I came out of Fallout with such a high energy and just was ready to just conquer the world at that point. Mission Impossible movies only get better with each installment. Christopher from Macquarie has clearly found just gold. He has struck gold with this franchise. He's making these movies just absolutely insane. Shout out to J.J. Abrams, Brad Bird, the guys who made the previous installments. Um, J.J. Abrams made the third one. Brad Bird made Ghost Protocol. Christopher, Mac Christopher Macquarie is responsible for Rogue Nation and Fallout, and now he'll be responsible for Dead Reckoning Part 1 and Part 2. And that's, that's the third thing, guys. This is a part one. I cannot wait to see what this movie has in store for us if they're doing a part two. Oh my gosh, this is going to be probably one of the biggest Mission Impossible cliffhangers we ever see. I can't wait, man. I'm really excited to see what this movie has in store for us. Mission Impossible is fucking amazing. That's all I have to say. <sighs> all right, look. It, my excitement may not show on my face, and that's really because the previous installment kind of took my hopes or joy for whatever this franchise could be at this point away but my next movie guys we got fast x and my excitement for this movie is a six out of ten yeah this is uh, spoiler warning this is the lowest l absolute lowest that i go as far as my excitement me uh, well the lowest that my excitement meter goes is a six this is the only movie on here with a six because while i am very excited for this movie i, I just Nine was was not good. Not, Fast and Fast Nine was not a good movie whatsoever. It was a lot of dumb stuff happening, but the dumb stuff really just got to the point where it's just ridiculously dumb, and it's not even fun anymore. It's just like this is not even, this is not remotely possible, dude. And I, I'm I honestly watch this scene in amazement every time I rewatch the film. Or I don't rewatch Fast Nine too often, but I I do have to go back and just make sure I was not missing anything when certain scenes are on. Literally in the beginning of Fast Nine, Tyrese is surrounded by a bunch of army guys, and they all literally fire off at him, and then he looks back up and they're just gone. I have no idea how they disappeared. I have no idea how he survived the situation. First of all, the first like 20 minutes or the, the first, uh, not even 20, the first 10 minutes of Fast and Furious 9, everybody should have died. <laughs> everybody would be dead. It, the way that they died in Deadpool 2, that's literally how every, well not, well, um, shoot, what was, what was the group that Deadpool called his, the band of, you know, superheroes that Deadpool got together, Terry Crews, um, Brad, Brad Pitt being the invisible guy, all those guys, uh, X-Force, can't believe I forgot X-Force, the X-Force, the way the X-Force died in Deadpool 2, that should have been everybody in this Fast and Furious 9 movie in the first 10 minutes, nobody should be alive, doesn't make any sense, and then I had to watch a cringy backstory between a young Dom and a young John Cena, and it's, and it's not young Dom and young John Cena playing them, but... Actually, now that I think about it, I think the guy that played Young Dom was in Sex Lies of College Girls. Actually, might be yeah, actually might have been him. But um, look, the ninth installment didn't really leave me like very excited for this film at all. I'm looking forward to Brie Larson and Jason Momoa joining the cast. 
as long as they keep you know Jason Statham in it, I'm I'm hoping that this movie's honestly I'm just hoping that this movie's a lot better than the ninth one. I, this movie did, does have a three hundred and forty million dollar budget, which is only the only the second closest movie to that is Avatar: The Way of the Water. So I'm very at four sixty mil. So I'm very surprised, or I'm very you know, I'm very enthused to see what the hell that Vin Diesel has in store for us for this last franchise because. The ninth one just made it clearly told us that, yeah, we should probably stop here, but they're not stopping. They're only going to keep going. So Fast X, please don't let me down because I still do love the franchise. But Fast 9 was just, Fast 9 was very painful. And it, it pains me to say that too. I wanted to love Fast 9 so much, but I just couldn't, couldn't say I enjoyed that movie. But Fast X, I'm hoping you make the turnaround, buddy. All right, so the next movie we got on this list is the Barbie movie. Yeah, I'm really excited for this one, man. My excitement level is actually a 12 out of 10 for this. I'm I'm really excited for this Barbie movie. And no, it's not because I played with Barbie as a, Barbies as a kid. I did not do that. I did, however, have to play with Bratz because I was the only kid at an all-girls daycare for a while. So, Or I was the only boy at an all-girls daycare for a while. It was like for four months or so. So all you had was girls' toys to play with. So yes, I had to play with Bratz. It wasn't so bad, <laughs> but look, the Barbie movie I am very ecstatic for because Greta Gerwig is directing this. You have Margot Robbie playing Barbie. You have Ryan Gosling playing the Ken doll. You have Issa Rae. I'm hoping she's Black Barbie. I mean, I, I don't see whatever other part she would play. I don't know the actor's name too well because I don't want to mispronounce it, but it's Shang-Chi. The guy who plays Shang-Chi is going to be in this movie as well. You have Will Ferrell, Michael Sarah. This is a very amazing cast. America America Ferreira. Like, this is an amazing cast. Like, I am looking... I think America Ferreira is in this movie. Yeah, she is. Uh, Kate McKinnon as well. Look, I'm looking forward to whatever Greta Gerwig has in store for us for this movie. I think this is going to be a very creative twist or creative concept on Barbie herself. And I think whatever Greta Gerwig has in store for us as far as the story is going to knock us, blow us all away. Like I'm, I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited for this movie. I know people are going to hear Barbie's coming out with a movie and think that's so girly. That's this. That's that. No, I think this is actually going to be a surprise hit of 2023, and I think a lot of you guys should try to check this movie out. It's going to be really good. All right, so my for my next movie on this list, I have Dune Part 2. This movie is also, with my excitement level, at a 15 out of 10. I am ecstatic. I cannot wait for this movie. If you saw the first one, then you all understand that none of us are ready for what part two has in store for us, Denis Villeneuve is absolutely going to come back with a straight fury, and this movie is going to be straight smoke. What smoke means? Non-stop action, man. This thing is going to blow us all away. It's going to be a complete sci-fi spectacle. I cannot wait for this movie to come out, man. You got Florence Pugh and Austin Butler joining the cast. Immaculate talents, man. Florence Pugh. Can't say enough about it. She's incredible in everything she does. Even Don't Worry Darling. Don't Worry Darling. You probably won't have to be a part of any shit fest like that again, I'm hoping. But Dune Part 2 is going to be absolutely amazing, guys. I cannot wait for this movie to come out, man. Dude. After, like, the first Dune, looking back at on it, and honestly, just re-watching it, it's a complete setup. It's setting up everything that Part 2 is going to have just absolutely blow us away. And Part 1 is is phenomenal i love the first movie man it's so it's not only just so beautiful to look at there's a sto the story that it's telling what it's building to you are in you are very interested in what's going on there man like you are literally glued to the screen you are literally you can't move like it's just and this is all a setup that's the thing if a movie has you shook like that and all it was doing was setting up what part two was about to deliver part two is just going to Oh my gosh, like there's too many movies guys, I'm telling you, 2023 is the year where movies go crazy, Dune Part 2, if you have not seen the first Dune, please go watch it, and then just sit back and wait until November, because yeah, unfortunately we gotta wait till November for it, but when November gets here, I am there opening night as soon as I can, front front row, I need I need my mind absolutely blown away, Denis Villeneuve is going to deliver, deliver on that, I have no doubt in my mind, but Dune Part 2 is another movie on this list. All right, so the next movie I have on this list is Hunter Games Ballad of what is it called? The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Sorry, I, I that that book when when I even heard that it was a book, I was not familiar with that at all. I didn't read it, 
But I am excited for the movie because Rachel Rachel Zegler is in the movie. Yeah, Rachel Zegler and Hunter Schaefer, who plays Jules on Euphoria. They are both starring in this film. You also have Viola Davis, Peter Dinklage joining the cast as well. Look, I'm just excited to be back in the world of Hunger Games. While Mockingjay was kind of a letdown, Hunger Games 1 and Catching Fire were amazing films. So I'm very much looking forward to what those what this movie has in store for us. It is a prequel. I don't know much about the story itself. Like I said, I didn't read the book, so... Not really going to do that. I'm just going to wait for the movie to come out. But Rachel Zegler is somebody who I think is going to be a shining star in the upcoming years. Hopefully this is another movie to add to her list. She, if you haven't seen West Side Story, please do because she's incredible in it. But this is going to be a pretty good movie, man. I'm really hoping. I'm really excited. I can't wait to see what Hunger Games has in store for us, man. It's going to be pretty good. All right, so the next movie I have on this list is a movie that I originally thought was... Well, no. Bullet Train I originally thought was the remake to this film but apparently it's not. This is the actual remake to the film Train to Busan. It's called The Last Train to New York. Now, this is just a rumor that is coming out in 2023, so I don't have a lot of details of, like about essentially like who's in it and all that other stuff or what the specific plot is going to be, but I do know that this movie is supposed to be a remake or the, like the American remake to Train to Busan. If you haven't seen Train to Busan, please go do that immediately because Train to Busan is literally non-stop zombie apocalypse action it's just ridiculous it's a non-stop thrill ride it's a train ride that you're definitely gonna you're never gonna want to get off but you're definitely gonna want to get off if you know what i mean because you're being chased by zombies but train to busan ridiculous film please go watch it if you haven't but this is, last train in new york is supposed to be the american made version of that hopefully they don't necessarily you know fuck it up but i'm really looking forward to it my excitement level for it's a 10 out of 10 didn't say that but yeah, my excitement level for is a 10 out of 10. I hope this movie comes out next year because, I, like I said, I, I originally thought this is what Bullet Train was supposed to be. I was very wrong about that. So, last train in New York. Don't let me down, baby. All right, so next up we got Disney Pixar's Elemental. Look, I don't really have much detail on this movie as far as, like, who's in it and things like that. They have shown teaser trailers for the film. All I can tell you about it is it's this movie where the different elements, you know, earth, wind, uh, water. I was about to say air. Earth, wind, fire and water like all the elements live together in peace and harmony and then this fire element and this water element they meet each other and they find out that opposites actually do attract and it's a pixar movie you know whatever concept pixar comes up with man it's just they're just going to turn it into something very heartwarming something amazing how could you not love disney pixar oh my excitement level for this movie is a 10 out of 10 too i mean it's a disney pixar movie how can i not be excited right all right next up Haunted Mansion 2023. That's right. They are making a, a remake to Eddie Murphy's Haunted Mansion. I guess we really don't have any anything original to make anymore. But the reason I am so excited about this film, my excitement level is, I'd say, at a 7 out of 10. Only reason it's at a 7 out of 10 is because Jared Leto's in the damn movie. Other than that, I'm excited for the rest of this cast. You got Owen Wilson, Tiffany Haddish, Jamie Lee Curtis, Lakeith Stanfield, Danny DeVito, Rosario Dawson, that, that's an incredible cast. And Jared Leto probably will do a good job with this group of people. It's just don't let him don't let him be the lead. Don't let him do anything by himself. Please don't let Jared Leto take over this movie at all because it's just going to be ridiculous. But I know if he's playing, if Jared Leto's playing that old creepy guy, the, the old creepy butler from the first movie or from the original, yeah, he's going to do a pretty good job as that. He can do a fantastic job as that. But um, look, Haunted Mansion, y'all know what it is. Y'all seen If you've seen the Disney classic, you know what that is. Eddie Murphy movie. I, I don't necessarily know how they're going to beat it because I actually just watched that movie like, I think like three weeks ago and it honestly still holds up for me. It's really, it's still pretty funny. It's just really good family film. I remember that was the first movie I actually rented on pay-per-view. Yeah. A lot of get a lot of other guys get pornos. I rented Haunted Mansion. It is what it is. All right. And last but not least, guys, we have Transformers Rise of the Beast. Now, look, I was not expecting a Transformers movie to end up on this list, but the Rise of the Beast trailer did come out, and it blew me away. First of all, the Bumblebee film that came out with Haley Steinfeld a few years back, you should definitely check that out because it definitely is moving the Transformers franchise in the correct direction, away from whatever the hell Michael Bay kept building. I didn't even, I didn't even like, I didn't even like, uh clicked together in my head that Michael Bay made the last two Transformers films with Mark Mark Wahlberg. I thought that was a completely different director than my man was like, nope, that's still Michael Bay. And I'm just like, wow. 
you really just continue to make the shittiest films of all time. It doesn't make any sense. But look, Michael Bay is nowhere near this project. It's a Stephen Capel Jr., the guy who directed Creed 2. I'm really excited to see. This This is starring Anthony Ramos. I'm very excited to see where this franchise goes, man, because this trailer just looks intense. It looks cool. It looks like they're moving Transformers in the direction that it needs to be moving in, and I just can't wait for it to come out. Now, that was a lot of movies, guys, so please let me know in the comments below which movies I missed. Are there any movies you're, that are coming out next year you're particularly looking forward to? I know I didn't say a very popular one for you guys, and that's probably Indiana Jones 5. I'm While the original trilogy is amazing... Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, I thought, was a fantastic movie as a kid, and then I rewatched it, and then I realized what everybody was talking about, why it's still pretty, it was pretty dumb. I, I, I'm just really not getting behind, while Tom Cruise can be 60 and do death-defying stuff off cliffs, I'm, I'm not really into the concept of an 80-year-old Harrison Ford, or night. I don't even know how old Harrison Ford is at this point, or an 80, 90-year-old man still trying to crack the whip on people, man, I, I, I don't know, I'm, like every time I like even every time I watch that tr Indiana Jones trailer, it's just like I'm like, dude, how are you even like? I clearly it's stunt doubles, but I'm just like, why? Why is this? A th I don't really understand why Indiana Jones five needs to be a thing. That's why I'm not really excited for it. Yes, you guys can make fun of me because I I can already hear people saying you're not excited for Indiana Jones, but you're excited for Fast and Furious. Yeah, I'm excited for Fast and Furious because I like Fast and Furious. Stop hating. You like Indiana Jones, it's whatever. But Indiana Jones missed my list, so I know I'm probably going to hear about that. But if there are any other movies that I missed, please let me know in the comments below, guys. I really appreciate it. What did you think of my list? What are you looking forward to next year in 2023? It's a really big year for movies and TVs, guys. I hope you guys can follow me along through the journey. But I really appreciate you for watching. Thank you so much. Be sure to like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff and more, guys. This is your guy in the chair. More content coming to you soon.